Uh, hey there fellow YouTubers, it's Frank Bush here again. Just out doing a scout into the terrain, looking for new areas to do future bushcraft videos in. But uh, I've had a few different people, offline and online, ask me if I could do a video detailing out some of the knots that I use when I go off into the field. So, in this video, that's exactly what I plan on doing. So I brought along some hanks of rope that uh, already have a bunch of knots tied into them. I'll remove those knots and uh, show you right from raw cordage of exactly how I tie together some of the primary knots that I use when I'm out in the field. Stay tuned. I've taken the knots out of the ropes, some of them anyways. I've got lots of rope that I carry. I tend to be rope heavy when it comes to the gear that I like to carry with me. But I uh, just laid them out on the table to show you here. These ones are six to eight foot lengths of rope. And for people that have watched previous videos of mine, uh, I tie a loop into the end and I use this to do a whole bunch of things, but uh, um, I use it to hang my backpack off a tree, I use it to create guy lines, all sorts of things. So the pile that's sitting here, this is a 28 inch length of rope. I use anywhere from 24 to 28 inches in length and uh, I use those to either have short pieces of rope to extend prussics when they're up on ridge lines or I use them to form the loops that I make prussic loops out of and then for this rope here this is about a 20 25 foot length of rope in this area and I tend to use those for short length ridge lines those types of things you know anywhere from 15 to 20 foot across the trees and uh, generally speaking I have a 50 foot length of rope but for the examples of the knots I don't need to pull that out but normally I would have that in my bag just in case I really need to reach across a large distance or there's large diameter trees I need to get around so I'll cut to a different angle and show some of these knots and start walking through them now. So the first knot I'm going to tie is just an overhand loop. So I take the rope and I put a bite in it. If you hear noise in the background, I'm close to the road. I'm just at a rest area, so bear with me. But uh, I put a bite into the rope and then I just take this bite, kind of wrap it around my finger and form a little loop. And then I take the bite end and feed it through the loop. And just apply some tension. That creates a loop on the end. I know there's guys out there that love the bowling knot and all that happiness, but I find this loop to be effective and I don't find it difficult to untie or anything when it's been cinched down with tension or any of that business. So I've been using this for 20 years without issue. So, But either way, there you go. It gives you a loop on the end of your line. So what I tend to use these loops for a fair bit is I'll take the loop I'll wrap it around a tree and then I'll just pull it through itself. So the, like I say, this is one of the six to eight foot lengths. So I'll just pull it right through the loop and it allows me to quickly and easily cinch onto a tree. I also do the same with tie outs on tarps. I'll do the exact same process. I just feed the loop through the tie out and then just feed the tag end of the line through that loop just so it can cinch on and that'll be on there good and solid. I have no concerns about that giving in any way, shape or form, but it allows me to easily just kind of lash onto an object. So when I want to hook a toggle onto my line, I've just got a piece of wood. I'm going to use this as my toggle. So I take the line that's hooked onto the tree. I fold it over so it kind of loops onto itself. I set it down flat against the line then as such. And then I just reach through and kind of hook on to that line on the inside. That's where I'm going to set my toggle onto, and then I just apply tension. I now have a toggle that's securely attached to the line. This is called a Marlin spike hitch. To release it, you can simply just kind of break its back and slide that stick out, and the entire knot comes loose. I'll show that one more time. So you kind of set the loop, I reach in, and I grab the inside strand, open it up, and just apply tension. So you'll see me use this to make toggles to hook onto prussic loops, and you'll also see me use it to kind of hang my bag on trees and that type of stuff. I use this Marlin spike hitch all the time. It's one of my go-to knots. Okay, so now I'm gonna take one of my 24 to 28 inch lengths of rope that I have. Now I could easily turn around and put an overhand loop on this, just the same, where I wrap it around my finger, create that hole, stuff it through, and have a loop. Now to break the back of these knots, I'll see if I can get this close, to break the back of these knots, you kind of 
pull that back and it loosens things enough where you can pull this line through and then you can pull that line through and the knot comes undone. You know, to break the back is fairly easy on these. But that's not exactly what I'm going to do for this knot. I'm going to do a fisherman's knot. So in order to do a fisherman's knot, this is to make the loops now. In order to do a fisherman's knot, I'm going to wrap the line over, run it around, and feed it back through the hole. That sets the one side. I'm going to turn it around. I'm going to do the exact same thing on the other side. I'm going to kind of try to get this on the camera the best I can. I'm going to kind of set it over top and run it underneath. I'm going to feed it back up and through the hole. Just little overhand knots. There's two of them. So it should look like that. And when you slide them together, it should look like this on the one side and it should look like that on the other. And then you can just apply tension. And that gives you your loops now. I use these little, you know, two foot, uh, 28 inch lengths of rope for all sorts of things. I'll show you another knot that I use quite often. But either way, we've got our loops now. We can start to make prosecs and other things with these. Okay, so the next knot I want to show you is the Canadian jam knot. So you take your line. This is, like I said, that two foot length of line that I have. I just do an overhand knot into it. Nothing complex. Tighten it down. And I want to leave a bit of a tag end. Now I'm going to put a second knot in the line, the exact same, do another overhand loop. And this one I want to leave open a bit so that it's still got a little bit of an opening. I'm going to wrap this around the object. This is really a constricting knot that's used to cinch down on things. And I'm going to take the other end and feed it through that opening. And then I'm going to apply tension to that knot a little bit. And then as I kind of rock the second knot we tied will slide up the line until it hits the first knot we tied and it'll constrict further and further. The more I kind of rock it back and forth and pull, the more it'll cinch down. This knot now is onto that tree extremely tight. It doesn't want to give. It takes me a lot of effort to even get it to move. And if I crank down on this really hard, I could cinch to this tree so it was really, really, really on there. I don't really want to do that in this example, but to release this, this tag end, you kind of pull it and it allows the knot to loosen back up again. Then you want to just turn around and break the back of the second knot, slide out your line, and now just break the back of your overhand knots and you're back to having a free line again. So that's the Canadian jam knot. I use this for if I've got a little loop on my bag and I want to cinch my backpack onto it or if I've got a pile of wood and I want to kind of cinch them together so that they're easier to carry. Using the Canadian jam knot is an ideal knot for kind of constricting on an on object or objects and really kind of cranking down on it so it's got a lot of tension. Then like I say, it, it, it's extremely effective. If it's wet like it is now, sometimes it's very difficult to get these knots off though. So, you know, be mindful of the fact of if you put this on and wet conditions and you don't have a pair of pliers and stuff with you then you really crank down that might be it for that rope it might be just strapped to whatever object you've cinched it to it is an extremely effective constricting knot okay so i've taken my 20 foot length of cordage and i've tied a loop onto the end of it just as i showed earlier and fed the other end through so i could lash onto this tree and i applied a bit of tension down on the other end now I'm gonna do the Prusik loop now, where I take this loop of cordage that I have, I'm gonna offset the fisherman's knot that we tied earlier so that it's not sitting centered, if you will. I'm gonna then turn around and kinda take this on the line and I wanna take this larger half of the loop because I've only just got a bit sitting over on this side and I wanna feed this through and just kinda pull it through. If I did that once, I could be on the line now, but it'll slide both ways if I apply tension. So that's called a lark's head knot. It's very handy to just kind of quickly set on to something. I'll just open it up a bit. Here, I'll kind of go back to the point I was at. So now, if I, instead of just feeding it through once, if I feed it through three times now, Try to do this without it being a fuddled mess. There's twice, 
I'm going to feed it through the third time. And I want to have it that the loop I started with is always to the outside. And it winds inward each time so that the windings as you've wrapped the inside around doesn't cross over itself. Now you just kind of apply tension on, on the end with the knot on it and kind of make sure it doesn't roll over onto itself. It'll want to. It's just the nature of the knot. And when you get it to the point that it's got tension to it, it should look like six loops sitting all side by each. I'll do a close up on this, don't worry. But now I've got a prussic on the line. And what that allows now is I can slide this prussic easily back and forth on this line. But as soon as I apply tension one way or the other, it locks and wants to hold. It doesn't want to slide down the line anymore, but I can still simply just move it. So I'll do a real close up of the, what this knot looks like so you know how to make sure that you get it set right. So you'll know your prussic has been tied properly if it has kind of six loops on the line that all sit side by each, but they don't kind of overlap each other, they just loop cleanly. And I'll show you kind of the back side of that knot and then it feeds off to the loop. So it should have this look and feel. Sometimes you'll find that the order, I'll just loosen this a bit, you'll find that the order gets offset and it'll look kind of like that. It'll cross over each other. You want to ensure that that's not the case. If that happens, it'll weaken the prussic and it won't want to grip on the line when you go to apply tension. So if it's got a nice clean sit like that, your prussic's on properly. And like I say, down at the other end, you'll see that the knot now is off-centered from where you potentially are going to be tying on or lashing on other objects to this point. So that's it for the prussic. So now I'm going to take an additional piece of the two foot length and I'm going to do exactly as I kind of alluded to earlier. I'm going to put a loop in the line, just as I showed at the beginning of the video. There's more than one way to do these, but I find this to be the quickest and simplest way. So now I've got a loop on this piece of cordage. And I want to put a marlin spike hitch onto this line as well. But firstly, I'm going to hook it onto that prussic. So as you can see, we've got our prussic on the line. And I've got this other two foot length that just has the eye tied into it. I can simply feed that eye through the prussic loop. And then just put the tag end of itself through the eye. Or the loop. And it now allows me to have a single line coming off of that prussic. So the prussic will still lock just the same as it always did before. It'll hold its tension. But now I've got a point where I've got a clean line. So I'm going to put another Marlin spike hitch onto this. So and just as I showed earlier in the video, I can turn around and Put the loop in the line, reach through, got a stick here, I'll just pop that toggle on, and now I've got a toggle that's attached to my prussic. So I can adjust my prussic to position this toggle where I want it to, but if I apply tension to that toggle, that toggle will be locked by the prussic against the line. And I'll show you an example of how that works when it comes to ridge lines and applying tension across the board. So as you can see, I've got a prussic that's tied on, or sorry, uh, a marlin spike hitch with a toggle that's tied on to my line. Now what I can do is turn around and take a prussic loop on another line and just hook the toggle through and make sure that the prussic is sitting line to line, that it's not actually on the wood. And then if I simply turn around and apply tension to that prussic, that toggle will hold on to the prussic and the prussic now can slide down the line and allow me to apply adjustable tension. So I'll give you a different angle so you can see the full scope of this. Okay, so you can see I've just tied off to this picnic table bench where I use the loop that I showed in the beginning of the video with the overhand loop there and I just fed its tag in through itself. This was on a shorter six to eight foot length. 
and it comes up and just had it where I tied with a Marlin spike hitch, I tied a toggle on. That toggle now was fed through a prusik loop. So this prusik loop sits on the line right here and runs as a main ridge line now, which goes over to the other tree and ties off as such, which I showed earlier. Now when it comes to this prusik I just did earlier as the example, if I had a tarp tie out now that I wanted to pull out, I could easily hook this onto the tarp tie out and then slide this prusik along the line to apply tension. So it allows you to kind of have an adjustable way where you can configure and apply tension to a ridge line. So you tend to use a lot of these knots in combination with each other to achieve such effects. So like I say, that was my first ridge line that I had up here. Slide under it. That was my first ridge line that I whipped up here. And I'm going to take another six to eight foot length of rope, which I tend to have tons of these standard in my bag. I've got 10 or 12 of them. And I've got loops where I just tied an overhand loop on both ends. I could easily now turn around, hook this on to a different tree or a different object, cinch it on quite quickly, and then take the loop on the other end, feed it through so that it's cinched onto that toggle, and then use the prusik, hopefully the camera's catching this, use the prusik to then apply tension. I'll jump over just to see that the camera's kind of seeing this the way I want to show it. Yeah, let me grab the camera off the tripod. So you can see the flexibility of this setup. I just hooked on that second line. Didn't even have a prusik on that line. I just had a loop on the end. But it was tied off to the prusik, which I can then slide down the line and have it apply tension. It allows you to do almost any configuration you want now. You could easily turn around and strap on lines going in different directions and different angles and freely apply tension to them. When it comes to setting up uh, shelters using tension as part of your structure, these are ideal knots to use when you're out in the field. So like I say, using the couple knots I showed, with the combination of toggles and loops, where the prusiks give you that adjustability can really create endless opportunities of how you want to set and structure things. If you wanted to make things more permanent that they were really locked down, you could use the Canadian jam not to do so. <coughs> but I don't really find it necessary. I find the strength of these knots and the flexibility of them being quick release makes it far more beneficial to use these knots instead of the Canadian jam knot for setting up shelters and that. The Canadian jam knot I really use primarily if I'm building tripods and I want to attach on additional support and you know, pieces and that kind of stuff that I'm worried about the knots, you know, and that they're really holding on firm. But for 99.99% of everything I do out in the field, these handful of knots allow me to do just about anything that I'd want to do. And as you can see, I've, you know, done a poor example when it comes to just strapping to the same tree. I could have easily just bound off to some other tree and had it that I had lines going in multiple directions and applied tension to all of them and they would all hold very taut. So I'm not just about the idea of you know using these knots to configure them the way I have. I also like the ease of being able to release all this equipment and bring it back to its original state. So with the way I've got things set up now I could easily slide this plastic back it removes the tension from that secondary line. I turn around and pop the toggle off the loop. It's now free. I can take my line off the tree just by sliding it back out. And I'll stop and show this because this is worth knowing. How to kind of quick release your hanks of rope. See if I can do this justifiably on the camera. So I kind of take the eye of, or the loop of the one end. I put it between my middle fingers. Now, kind of hook around my thumb 
and around the pinky and I do figure eights. And I keep doing that over and over again until I get down to the point where I've got, say, two or three foot left, maybe spare. I'm just gonna slide my fingers out carefully and then I'm gonna wrap the end and just keep wrapping that around and around and around. So I come back to the loop. Just want to feed that through itself. Feed that through itself. Just to kind of cinch it on. It allows me to keep my bundles nice and clean. And one of the good parts about this is because it's quick release. I can turn around and take the eye of my hank of rope. And if I pull that now, it'll pull and allow me to pull it out of the bundle without having to worry about it kind of jumbling up on itself until it gets right near the very end. I've got a little overhand knot, I can just pop that out. But it allows me to keep this gear in my bag and kind of in a controlled state, if you will. I'll just do that again a second time because I always like to keep my hanks kind of under wraps, if you will. Well, it's extremely wet, so it's making it difficult to work with the rope, but either way. This all becomes second nature. I don't even think about doing this stuff when I'm out in the field. I just do it. I'm just gonna feed that through. And it just allows me to keep my hanks of rope very compact and organized. But as you can see, back to this line. So now when it comes to that Prusik loop toggle, I just break the back of the knot, slide it off. That knot's now gone. I can take the line, that two foot length of line that I attach to the Prusik and just pop that off the line. Break its back. And I'm back out to having my clean line. And the Prusik itself, I can just grab onto the loop part which is tight up to the line and just pull. That Prusik will start to unloop from itself now I've freed up all my lines from the main ridge line, and I can do the exact same thing with the main ridge line. Just to show you this example again, my 20 foot length of uh, ridge line wasn't long enough. I just loosen that Prusik off. It releases all the tension. I can pop the toggle back off that Prusik. Normally speaking, I just leave those Prusik sitting on my ridge lines because they're handy enough to just stay. And on the ends, I normally just do a little overhand knot to ensure that the Prusiks don't slide off the end of those lines. And when it comes back to this six to eight foot length of rope, I break the back of the Marlin spike hitch, slide out my toggle, just pull. That knot's now out of the line. I can pull that back off, wrap it back up again. And I'm ready to go pretty well for the next time I go out into the field. So depending on the environment you're in, you might need a uh, cordage that's a little longer than six to eight foot. But generally speaking, I find the six to eight foot, if you're using a combination of loops and toggles to do stuff, even if you have to use a second piece of line, I'll just toss that on the table. Even if you have to use a second piece of line, it's normally not a problem using these techniques. So there's still one or two things I wanna show you before we hit the end of this video. So one of the things was when it comes to you know, hooking a toggle onto the line, I can take the loop that's sitting on the very end of my line and just feed it through itself and set a toggle into that. It gives me a way to have a toggle right onto the end of the line if I need one there. And what I can do, I'll just wrap around here as an example. What I can do then is take the Prusik that I've got sitting on my line and just hook the toggle onto the Prusik make sure I'm on the rope and not the wood. And now I've got an adjustable point here where I can apply tension. And I'll show you one last knot, which is probably one of my favorite knots, on the uh, other side when I hook onto the tree. Okay, so this is probably one of my favorite knots. I wrap the end around the tree. It's just the raw end, there's no knots at all at this point in time. Apply a little bit of tension, but it doesn't need to be stiff. It can still be fairly loose. I'm going to turn around and I'm going to take my line. I'm going to roll it into a loop so that the tag end is underneath. 
Now with this loop, I'm going to take the other end of the line, I'm going to wrap that around just like I would a Prusik. So I'm going to wrap that around three times. Once I'm on there, I now take the tag end, put a bite in the line, and feed it through the loop. And start to apply tension to that knot and firm it up. Now this Fairmont hitch, the modified Fairmont hitch, it'll act just like a Prusik. I can slide this along the line and apply tension to it. Make sure my knot's all firmed up. And it'll hold wherever I set my tension to. And I can apply a lot of tension to that knot. And it'll just kind of lock and hold things in place. If I want to loosen it off a bit, I can just pop it loose. If I want to tighten it up, I can just tighten it up. One of the beauties about this knot is the reality of its quick release. If I pull on this line, the entire knot just comes loose and it's off. I'm, I'm free to just take it off the line and off I go. So I'll show that to you one more time. Like I say, this is called the modified Fairmont hitch. I took a Fairmont hitch and added an additional loop to it because I found it stuck to the paracord a little better. So I turn around and take it, put an underhand loop so the tag ends underneath, kind of pinch it at that point. And so I've got this nice clean loop to work with. I take the other end of the line and simply just wrap it around that line on the inside three times. The little bit that's kind of left of the loop, I turn around and take the tag line that's remaining, feed a bite of that through, and just kind of lock it in place. Dress up the knot a little bit so it looks clean. It looks almost like a Prusik loop. I'll show it to you up close. And like I say, just apply tension to my line and I can really crank down on that. And uh, the beauty of it is that it all is just a quick release knot. Okay, so here's a close up of the modified Fairmont. As you can see, it's got kind of a Prusik esque look to it, if you will. This loop, if you wanted to secure this knot, you just put a toggle in here and pull on this and apply tension, and it'll just kind of lock this knot so it isn't quick release. But other than that, it acts almost identically to a Prusik loop. It has very much the same characteristics in a lot of ways. And like I say, when it comes to releasing this, I simply pull, that loop pops out, and the entire knot just breaks its back, and it frees off from the tree. This is a fantastic knot when it comes to giving it an adjustability, and the fact that it has the quick release all together in one. And I'll show you the other side now, because I'll, I'll re-strap this back to the tree and show you how you can adjust both sides with what I've just done on this ridge line. So and as you can see, I've just reattached the Fairmont hitch, or the modified Fairmont hitch. Reattach that back to the line, it only takes a second to do. But back down on this other end, where we had put the toggle right onto the end of the loop of the rope, you can see the Prusik sits on the rope, not on the wood. You don't want to apply any real tension to this wood. It's just there to give you uh, something to hook onto. But because this Prusik now is adjustable on this side, it allows it that both sides of this ridge line have a level of adjustability. So I'll loosen off the Fairmont hitch on the one side and tighten it on this side just to show you, you can kind of adjust things. But like I say, I'll just adjust this side now. All I got to do is kind of push the Fairmont hitch towards the tree a little bit. It gives some slack to the line. But now over on this side, I can achieve almost the same result. I can slide that Prusik loop that way on the line and reapply the tension. So it gives it an ability to kind of make it adjustable on both sides of the line. Just adjusting the Prusik loop or the modified Fairmont hitch just adjusting those along the line to the desired location. And it's just as simple, I can loosen it back off again here, go back to the Fairmont hitch, apply tension on that side, and I'm back into having a taut line again.
So there's a level of flexibility that exists with uh, using the Fairmont hitch in combination with the Pro 6 and the toggles. So in releasing this setup and getting it back to the original point, I can simply loosen off that prusik. I'm disconnected from that side now. I take that loop, loosen it off a bit, pop off the toggle that I had on there. I'm back to the loop at the end of my rope. Still got the prusik on the line. When it comes to the other end, I pop that Fairmont hitch. I'm loosened off the tree on that side. So it's very rapid to turn around. I'll just go back to the loop. Do that quick release like I showed earlier in the video, where when I want to release these hanks later on to use them again for another project. Just wind them all back up. Like I say, when I get down to having a couple feet, I just kind of pop that off my fingers, loop it around. And then just cinch it tight. And I'm back to having a nice clean setup that I can throw into my bag. Well, thanks for tuning in and watching the video. If you made it this far, congratulations, you made it to the end. <laughs> but uh, hopefully you find these rope techniques that I used handy. You know, the, the knots and the rope craft is an important element if you're out in the field and you're wanting to do bushcraft stuff. You know, it's good to become proficient in these. There's a handful of simple knots that I displayed today that really are invaluable as you're out into the field. But if you enjoy this type of content, please like, share, and subscribe. And thanks for watching. Cheers.